Welcome everyone to GamerMeld. Today was NVIDIA's GTC conference, where they actually had some pretty huge announcements that I really wanted to get out to everyone as quickly as I could. But that isn't all. I'll also be going over Epic spending hundreds of millions of dollars for exclusive games, DDR5 gets shown off, more shortages, NVIDIA is screwed up again, and some of the company's new products, including next-gen GPU's release, and NVIDIA's CPU. That's right, CPU. But first, in honor of Intel once again using their 14 nanometer process for the company's 11th gen release, I'm relaunching the 14 nanometer plus 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 infinity mugs. That's right, keep your coffee hot for hours, though not as hot as Intel keeps their CPUs. And now with the new enamel mug, you can show off without fear of breaking it like Intel broke the hearts of gamers everywhere with 11th gen. Get your mug before Intel finally goes 10 nanometers at store.gamermeld.com. Okay, it's news time, man. First up for today, if you've been curious as to how much Epic Games has been spending on their Epic Game Store that actually launched late in 2018, it's a lot. This report is actually brought to us thanks to the feud that's been going on between Apple and Epic regarding Apple's App Store fees for iOS products. Starting things off, we can see that Epic Games actually spent a whopping $440 million on securing these exclusive titles in 2020 alone. That's half a billion dollars in one year they've been spending to try and get all of these exclusive titles though most of them are only exclusive for about a year. Now, with that said, that isn't how much money they've lost. As you can see here, they effectively use this money as a minimum guarantee for game publishers that they would make a certain amount of money if they stayed off of Steam for a year. The thing is that, as you can see here, third-party games, at least according to their year-end report, Third-party games only accounted for $265 million. So obviously, they're nowhere near that $444 million. With that said, it does look like they lost between 2019 and 2020 a whopping $453 million. Now, with all of those losses, you would think Epic would decide just to say, uh, this isn't really working out, but... Apparently, they're doing the opposite. As just recently, as early as February, Epic actually stated that over the next two years, they're gonna release more exclusives than they've ever released so far. So they're definitely gonna be spending a ton more. And that's obviously pretty annoying for quite a few Steam users, considering a lot of people are really getting sick of all these logins. And all the Epic Game Store does is essentially give you yet another login just to play your games. Of course, we have heard that the Epic Game Store does offer significantly lower rates as far as how much of a cut they get of the game sales, so that does help publishers, developers, and things like that, but obviously it is still annoying for most gamers. And next up for today, while basically no one owns any kind of hardware that supports DDR5 right now, Galax is apparently hard at work at working on their memory modules. For those who don't know, Galax is a company that very much caters to the overclocking market, and according to this new Facebook post, you can see that they actually have DDR5 memory modules planned to be coming soon. You can see that they shared some images of them, and this definitely is pretty exciting just because DDR5 is significantly faster than DDR4. It's definitely going to be a decent upgrade. And next up for today, I have more terrible news for anyone who's been dealing with all the shortages of the PC market. Today's story originally comes from DigiTimes, who reported that Realtek apparently extended their delivery lead times to 32 weeks as capacity from both their foundries and getting raw materials has apparently become a problem. The issue with this, I will say, mostly comes to notebooks as their audio LAN chips are used in quite a bit of notebooks. Let's take a look. I believe it was, yes, they actually supply 70% of audio LAN chips used in the global notebook market. So this is obviously a pretty massive hit to the notebook market. So if you are currently in the market for a new notebook and the one that you're looking to purchase is currently available, I would personally not try and wait for any kind of discounts or anything just because that may not happen. And to be honest, you may not be able to purchase it before too long anyway. 
And speaking of supply issues, very vaguely related to it, if you remember not long ago, Nvidia had that whole hash rate limiter thing, yet they accidentally released a driver that kind of lifted it, except for a few scenarios. Basically, it's been an absolute disaster on that front. Now, it looks like someone has actually cracked virtualization on GeForce cards. As you can see right here, according to WCCF Tech, there's a mod called VGU Unlock that essentially enables GPU virtualization on consumer cards. Now, for those who don't fully understand virtualization, a very simple look at it is just that you can effectively turn one GPU into multiple machines that can power multiple users. You can see it right here. One discrete GPU essentially becomes multiple different GPUs. And so far, this has not been something that you could do on consumer GPUs. Actually, it's something that's only been allowed for Tesla or Quadro cards, which definitely makes it a pretty big deal because those cards are extremely expensive. So if anyone can just do it on any GeForce GPU, <laughs> that really is a major blow to NVIDIA. And speaking of NVIDIA, as I said earlier, the company just had their GTC conference where they actually announced quite a few products. A couple of these being the A30 and A10, two little brothers to NVIDIA's A100 data center GPU. And they actually are fairly interesting, just because for one, we have the A30, which very much is more of a compute GPU. You can see that it has a very big focus on that. It's actually built from the GA100, but then we have the A10, which really seems to be more of an all around GPU. This one is actually built from the GA102, which is the same GPU that the uh, 3080 was built on. And you can actually see that while it doesn't do as good in certain workloads, FP32 workloads, it actually dominates things. And that specifically is more of like your gaming graphics type of workloads. But in more AI focused workloads, you can see that it certainly does not compete. Still, this is a fairly interesting GPU just because it kind of seems more of like an all around GPU. You can see that it's GPU for AI, graphics, and video. So it does seem to be pretty interesting for those who are doing quite a bit of different style workloads. And of course, while that's interesting, let's get right to the creme de la creme. NVIDIA, oh wait, I have Intel, why is that? That's because for quite a long time, we've all known that Intel is that company that primarily focused on CPUs while NVIDIA primarily focused on GPUs. It was AMD that actually did focus on both for quite a while. Well, all of a sudden, Intel decided to fully enter the GPU market. They've always had, you know, integrated GPUs and things like that, but their sole focus has very much been CPUs. Well, it's become pretty clear since then that Intel is very serious about that. And because of that, quite a bit of people are asking, when is NVIDIA gonna do CPUs? Well, if you follow the market, you know that NVIDIA kind of can't because the x86 architecture that both Intel and AMD CPUs are built on, NVIDIA does not have the rights to that, and they're pretty much definitely never gonna get them. And that is why, at least in my opinion, we see right here, just last year, NVIDIA purchased ARM for a whopping 40 billion dollars. They clearly do want to enter the CPU market and they are very clearly serious about this as they just announced their NVIDIA Gray CPU. Now I will go ahead and say that this is an AI and HPC CPU so it isn't made for the consumer market but maybe NVIDIA will launch some things like that in the future though I will say I wouldn't really hold my breath. Still this is a big deal just because it absolutely challenges both Intel and AMD. And of course, NVIDIA already is heavily in the AI market, so they may not have a very hard issue selling these. Either way, this is a pretty potent CPU, as obviously it is based on x86 architecture. I'm just kidding. It is ARM based and it's based on their next generation Neoverse core. Not only that, but it includes a whopping 500 gigabyte per second LPDDR5X memory. That's certainly pretty impressive. And at the same time, it has a 900 gigabyte per second cache coherency interconnect for CPU to GPU, and then a 600 gigabyte per second CPU to CPU interconnect. Now, 
You can see right here that as of now, they're releasing it as an SOC, but maybe further down the road, they'll actually release it as just a socketable CPU. Time, of course, will always tell. With all of that said, while it is seriously impressive, I will go ahead and say that apparently Nvidia is going around claiming that it gets upwards of 10 times more performance than x86 servers, but when we look at the actual numbers, we can see that specifically the CPU gets uh, apparently over, but probably just over 300 on spec rate 2017, while uh, when we look at AMD CPUs, you can actually see that Epic Milan gets between 382 and 424, so it absolutely does not beat that. It actually gets much closer to their last gen 64 core ROM chip. With that said, let's not forget that AMD flat dominates when it comes to performance right now in this market, so the fact that it can get anywhere near it is pretty bad news for Intel. Either way, that obviously means that that whole 10 times performance claim is only referring to GPU-driven workloads. So keep that in mind, but like I said, it is still a fairly impressive CPU. Anyway, we have one last little bit of information that came out of this that is pretty exciting. As you can see right here, it looks like their next-gen uh, architecture, they're right now calling it Ampere Next, but I'll kind of get to that in a quick second, is gonna be released in 2022. Now, I will say that their uh, AI GPUs typically do release prior to the consumer models, but I would still expect it to be sometime in 2022, though probably more late 2022. Either way, that is a time frame for us to at least be able to see the next architecture that NVIDIA plans to release. Now, really quickly, speaking of that next architecture, a lot of people really thought that it was going to be Hopper, but Grace actually comes from Grace Hopper, so we're more thinking that next gen is actually going to be called Ada Lovelace. So we shall see on that. Of course, that isn't really that important. Who really cares what the name is called? It's all about performance. Anyway, while that does it for today, I do hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And really, I have one question. Should Intel and AMD be worried? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, have a great day.